The second half of the 19th century was the time of development of the areas on the eastern bank of the Vistula. The engineer Stanislav Kierbej is building a bridge that allows you to reach Praga from the castle square in a few minutes. A dozen or so years later, a railway bridge is built under the Warsaw Citadel. The government of Tsarist Russia and private companies form a network of connections that enables the transport of Warsaw products to Gdansk, St. Petersburg, Moscow, and Odessa. The area between the borders of Praga and the new railway routes then belonged to Xaveri Konopatsky. The building at 11 Szczeleska Street, where the owner of the land lives, has survived to this day, and now we can find the district house of culture in it. In the mid-19th century, Xaveri Konopatsky plots his land and sells the plots to entrepreneurs. Due to access to the transport network, many companies choose Praga as their headquarters. This is how Nuva Praga is created. Ten years after the death of his founder, one of the streets is renamed Konopatska. The 80-meter-high chimney standing by one of the factory halls is a characteristic element of the landscape that we can see in old photos and postcards from Shredska Street. The chimney belongs to a chemical factory which at the beginning of the 20th century produces, among others, machine lubricants, flow wax, shoemaker's wax, and stellar shoe polish. After the First World War, the complex was transferred to the German concern Schist. In the back of the property, new buildings are built and the company buys neighboring plants including the Brunner Brothers Lamp Factory. The English concern Unilever becomes a co-owner of the company in the 1930s. The name of the new enterprise is Schistlever Company starts the production of Biawe Yellen soap but also produces other products such as washing powders or edible vegetable fat ceres. It is this oil that Praga confectioners used to fry donuts and fillings before the war. Military plants are also being built in Nova Praga before the Second World War. In just three years, millions of ammunition are produced here. Today, we will not hear the work of devices and stoves here, but the buildings of former factories come to life again, turning into elegant lofts.